Greetings in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. I welcome you to this uh, broadcast, the International Family Church broadcast. I really believe that God has a word for us that will speak into our situations. I pray that you prepare your heart, get away from all distractions and just sit and listen and let the Lord just minister to you and help you and just grow you and encourage you today in the name of Jesus Christ. Let's just take a moment and pray before we dive into the message. Father, I ask you, in the name of Jesus Christ, that your spirit will speak to every person who is going to listen and is listening to this broadcast. I pray that you will encourage them. You will stir their hearts to believe in God, to follow your word, and to see that you are there to help them and to deliver them today. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Now, the title of my message is The Lion's Den. That's a strange title, but I believe that as we go through, you know, you will look into your life and maybe you'll be able to say, I feel like I'm in the lion's den, but God is here to deliver you. Our text is in Daniel chapter 6, so I'm going to read quite a number of verses, so just follow along and let's read and then we will talk about what we've just read. Daniel chapter 6 and we'll read from verse 17 to 24. So we pick up the story from the time that Daniel is now put in that den. Verse 17. It reads, A stone was brought and placed over the mouth of the den, and the king sealed it with his own signet ring and with the rings of the nobles, so that Daniel's situation might not be changed. Then the king returned to his palace and spent the night without eating and without any entertainment being brought to him, and he could not sleep. At the first light of dawn, the king got up and hurried to the lion's den. When he came near the den, they called to Daniel in an anguished voice, Daniel, servant of the living God, has your God, whom you serve continually, been able to rescue you from the lions? Daniel answered, O king, live forever. My God sent his angel, and he shut the mouths of the lions. They have not hurt me, because I was found innocent in his sight. Nor have I ever done any wrong before you, O king. Verse 23. The king was overjoyed and gave orders to lift Daniel out of the den. And when Daniel was lifted from the den, no wound was found on him because he trusted in his God. At the king's command, the men who had falsely accused Daniel were brought were brought in and thrown into the lion's den along with their wives and children. And before they reached the floor of the den, the lions overpowered them and crushed their bones. Now I had to read that last verse because, you know, just to show that this was no child's play. As Daniel is put in that den, there were real lions hungry lions ready for some beef but the Lord delivered Daniel and it's amazing to see this mighty deliverance but now when we think about it then in relation to our lives I think we will be looking at situations that we go through that seem like you know we are in trouble we are pushed in a corner it almost feels like Life is going to devour us. Situations are going to devour us. There are giants in our lives that we seem too big for us to overcome. But today I'm here to tell you that the God that delivered Daniel from the lions is going to deliver you from the issues and the things you are facing today in the name of Jesus. Now what comes to your mind when you think of the lion's den? I'm sure if you are awake, I think it's, it's no-brainer. 
that one of the things that comes to your mind is lions and hungry lions. But I think we need to go to see beyond the lions. I think we need to look at the lion's den, not just as a place where they are devouring lions, but we need to look at the den as the scene of God's great deliverance. To look at the den as an opportunity for the Lord to be glorified. Now that changes the way you face life. That changes the way you approach the things that you are dealing with right now. If you just see the problem for what it is, you know, you will be depressed. But if you see this problem as an opportunity for God to reveal his glory, as an opportunity for God to show his greatness, then it changes how you face your troubles. The disciples are asked by Jesus, let's cross over to the other side. And the storm develops. In one of those instances, Jesus is asleep. And they come and wake him up and say, don't you care that we perish? But Jesus rebukes them and says, you have little faith. And obviously we see him calm the waters. Now, interesting enough is that the life of Jesus was not problem-free. And I'm here to tell you that the way of the righteous is also not trouble-free. You know, the Christianity we have been called to is not one on cloud nine, where everything is just, you know, rosy. But it is said that even roses have thorns. The Bible says in Psalms 34 and verse 19, it says, Many are the afflictions of the righteous. But the Lord delivers him out of them all. It's a very interesting verse. You know, it says many, many means many, and many could really be many, are the afflictions of the righteous. But, that but is important. But the Lord delivers him from them all. You may be listening to me right now and you're saying, you know, brother, pastor, I'm going through some affliction. I'm going through some troubles. And there are many. Uh, there, I'm almost feeling like I'm, I can't control what's happening around me. I've got good news for you. Many are the affliction of the righteous. But that part is important for you. The Lord is going to deliver you from them all. That should make you jump that should cause you to be excited knowing that God is there with you right now as we speak. You know, don't turn your eyes on the bigness of your troubles. Don't turn your eyes on the bigness of the enemy that comes against you. But turn your eyes on the bigness of your God. Because what you are going through is his opportunity to declare his glory, to manifest his glory, to demonstrate his power. John 16 and verse 33, we see the same idea. Jesus speaking, he says, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble. Notice again, he's not saying you may have trouble, maybe it's, you know, there are chances that you may have trouble. He says you will have trouble. But, again another but, but take heart, I have overcome the world. Wow. We are more than conquerors in Christ Jesus. Those that have faith in him and follow his word overcome the world. Our faith overcomes the world. Jesus has overcome the world. So despite what's happening in your life, despite what's happening in our world, for us who are in Christ, let's take heart. Let's take courage. Jesus has overcome the world. Let's take heart. Let's have peace of mind. Despite the issues of life that are out of control around us, let's take courage because Jesus has overcome the world. The sin you are in, that lion's den, your lion's den, is God's sin to demonstrate his miracle working power. That lion's den you are in 
It's God's opportunity to glorify himself. Now, it's interesting as we continue to discuss this, what happened around this whole miracle of deliverance from the lion's den. Now, I want us to go before the lion's den. Let's just think, what was life like before the lion's den for Daniel? In verse 16, he acknowledges something interesting. I'd like to read it. It says, so the king gave order and they brought Daniel and threw him into the lion's den. The king said to Daniel, may your God, whom you serve continually, rescue you. Now, this is interesting testimony for me, that a king acknowledged that Daniel served the Lord continually. Maybe let's talk to ourselves. Before we ever face a lion's den, before we get into you know, a situation where we are in trouble or we are put in a corner, there are situations in our life. What is our life like? I want to suggest to you that you want your life to be like Daniel's life, that you are going to serve the Lord continually. You know, it's one thing to only want to save God when you are in trouble. It's another thing to save God continually. That if when the good times are there, you serve the Lord. When the bad times come, you serve the Lord. When you are, your bank account looks fat, you serve the Lord. When your bank account is empty, you still serve the Lord. In all the good times, in season, out of season, in the good times, at all times, you have made up your mind. Like Joshua said, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. That was a commitment, a life commitment of serving the Lord. So choose to serve the Lord. Choose to worship the Lord. Choose not to serve any other foreign God. But the Lord God Almighty, the God who made the heavens and the earth, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. When you look at your life, can you comfortably and truly say that I live to save the Lord, that I continually save the Lord, like Daniel? Many times we get in trouble when trouble comes because we've been far from the Lord. And so we are panicking, we are crying, we are, you know, we, we are almost like, you know, trying to find a peace God. But you see, God is not appeased. We come to God in faith, in genuine repentance, in faith. And God wants us to walk in his ways. Now, when we talk about serving the Lord, let me give you just maybe three things that you want to think about. You know, it entails walking in the ways of the Lord. That is serving God continually. We've been called to a holy life. We've been called to live a holy life. We've been called to walk in righteousness, in the ways that are in the light, ways that please God. And that's how your life should be. When we look at your life, when people look at your life, they can find no fault in you. They find no, this person loves, this person walks in truth. This person is not walking in unrighteousness, but they walk in the ways of the Lord. The other thing is that you trust in the Lord. We see that about Daniel. His whole deliverance from the lions was a result of his trust in his God. Do you trust God? When things come in your life, they come against you. Do you put your trust in God? Where is your trust? The Bible says some trust in chariots. And some in horses. That means they trust in armies, in their human power, human abilities, you know, in the in the ability to defend themselves. But see, God is calling us not to lean on our own understanding, but to trust in the Lord with all our hearts. You want before you ever get to your lion's den that you are walking continually, trusting the Lord, walking in faith, growing yourself in your faith. So that when trouble comes, the God that was with you. Even in the good times, you still see him in those bad times. The other thing is pray daily. Daniel was like that. He was a man who 
prayed daily. Actually, he ends up in the lion dens because of his prayer life, which was vivid, which was productive, which was seen, which people knew that he would never compromise when it came to saving his God. He saved him continually despite the consequence. And it's important that you have a prayer life, a worship life, that is not determined by the temperature around you, but it's determined by your devotion to your God. God is calling you that you must trust Him. You must pray daily. Notice I am stressing praying daily. You know, you don't want to get to a place where you think, you know, I can only pray once a week because I'm a busy person. If you are too busy for God, there's no way you are walking with God. Because if you are walking with Him, you will walk in His ways. You will do what He commands. And one of the things that He commands us is to pray. Pray without ceasing. He commands us to pray for one another. He is commanding us to live a life of prayer. I pray that from this moment onward, that prayer will become a priority for you. Because you want to be like a Daniel. That when the high waters come, when the winds blow, when trouble comes, it will find you fired up, filled with the Spirit, find you walking with God, find you ready, find you full of faith, that despite what the devil throws at you, you can literally laugh at the devil, knowing that you have the victory and you trust in the God who gives you the victory. Now let's end again by going back to the lion's den. These are my words to you. Don't be afraid. Don't fear the lion's den. It is the sin of God's deliverance and power. You know, it's amazing that, you know, if we never went through trouble, we would never know the power of God. Because the power of God is manifest in our troubles. We see healing when healing is broken and destroyed by the power of God. Then we see him as healer. When we need help, when he comes through, we see him as our helper. We see him as our provider. So the things that come against you, that seem like liars ready to devour your life, are actually an opportunity for God to demonstrate his miracle working power. And I sense the Holy Spirit here, that God is here to work in your life. He's here to deliver you. So when you are in your lion's den, don't just see it as a death sentence. See it as an opportunity for God to be glorified. You see, look at Daniel. Because he believed in his God, God showed his glory and people acknowledged God. That the God of Daniel was the true God. I pray that you will be a testimony, a vessel God uses through the circumstances of your life. He uses you to demonstrate his glory and to bring glory to himself. Now, despite what you are going through right now, Despite the den you are in, the Goliath you are facing, the trouble you are facing, there may be many, and don't be a surprise, because the Bible says many are the affliction and the troubles of the righteous. But I'm here to tell you, to tell you that God is delivering you. He will deliver you from them all today in Jesus' name. I want you to pray with me. Just stretch your hand towards your screen and in agreement with me, that God's power will be manifest in your life. God's glory will be revealed through your circumstances. You know, we are in a time that we are dealing with this uh, coronavirus that is going around. And there's fear. It's like a lion's den for us. But be of good cheer. Be at peace. God has overcome the world. And this is an opportunity for God to glorify himself in the midst of troubles. God wants to glorify himself through our lives. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for my friends that need healing right now. I command sickness to leave their bodies in Jesus' name. I pray, Lord, for those that are in financial uh, difficulty. Some of those problems brought by their own habits. But Lord, we pray that you will deliver them today. And some of them Lord, that are losing jobs because of Lord, the times that we are in. And Lord, some of them don't even know where the next uh, paycheck is coming from. I pray that you reveal yourself 
as Jehovah Jireh to them. May you be glorified, Lord, in our lives. We want our eyes to see you deliver us from our own lion's den. In Jesus' name, amen.